G'day guys, I'm Ragnarok. Welcome to my beginner's guide for Battlefield 2042. If you've just got the game, or you've played a bit, but was a bit overwhelmed, you're in the right place. In this video we'll cover all the basic things you need to know, so you can play the game in the way that suits you. I'll cover weapons, unlocks, specialists, and game modes. See the timestamps below if you want to jump straight to a topic. First, let's cover game modes. On the main screen, you'll see All Out Warfare, Hazard Zone, and Battlefield Portal. Warfare is your main 2042 gameplay with game modes like Conquests and Breakthrough. You can select these by selecting Change Game Mode down on the bottom left. When clicking Change Game Mode, you'll see at the top you'll have the options of Multiplayer or Solo and Co-op. If you're new to the game, I recommend playing solo, or if you're playing with a friend, play together with co-op so you can practice playing against AI. AI are far easier to kill than real players, however, you'll still earn XP to rank up, and it's easier to test out different weapons and specialists to help you find which playstyle suits you most. Once you're more confident after playing against the AI, then give multiplayer a try, and you'll find you'll have a lot more success compared to when you first tried multiplayer. Conquest is your classic battlefield game mode where you capture objectives around the map, hold more than the enemy team, and their tickets will bleed fast, giving you a higher chance of winning the match. This gameplay is more open, so if you're not a fan of linear maps or bottlenecks, you'll enjoy Conquest. Breakthrough is similar to Rush Mode or Demolition, however, instead of planting a bomb, you just take control of the zone by standing in it with your team, similar to capping flags on Conquest. This game mode is a bit more linear, however the map is still large enough for you to flank around the back of the objectives if that's more your style. Hazard Zone is a brand new game mode to Battlefield. You play in a squad of four and run around together collecting data from objective points. Each point will have a team of AI players you'll need to eliminate. If your squad is wiped, the game is over. However, the further you progress, the more money you make, which means the more powerful weapons and gadgets you can purchase, allowing you to be more efficient in your next match. My advice here is to play with friends so you can talk over voice chat and coordinate your strategy. The AI in this game is far more challenging, plus you have other things to watch out for, like a tornado approaching you from behind. Also on the select specialist screen, hit the spacebar or jump button to actually select the specialist, I'm not sure if that's a bug or if that's just the way it is. Battlefield Portal is also new to Battlefield. It allows you to play game modes from previous Battlefield titles, so if you enjoyed games like Bad Company 2 or Battlefield 3, you can enjoy some nostalgia by playing some of their maps, as well as game modes, and even use the same weapons and classes. I played some Bad Company 2 Rush mode and forgot how much fun it actually was playing with weapons like the M16A2, the G3, and XM8. I hope they bring in more titles to the portal, uh, like uh, Battlefield 2 and 2142 in the future. Cool, that's the gameplay covered, so let's move on to Specialists. Specialists are a new feature to the Battlefield series, but they are similar to classes or weapon kits in previous Battlefield titles. Each specialist has a unique ability, you can use any weapon, gadget, grenade you wish, the only difference is the specialist perks. I'm going to briefly go over each specialist so you have a better idea of what each one does. First we have Sundance. Sundance has three utility grenades, the scatter grenade, the anti-armor drone, and an EMP field. She also has a wingsuit instead of a parachute. The scatter grenade explodes into multiple explosives, having a chain explosive effect great for a large number of enemies in a small area like a doorway. The anti-armor grenade is actually a drone that chases a vehicle like a heat seeker, great for taking out aircraft flying close by or an enemy vehicle zipping past. The EMP field disables electronics like the Robodog, turrets, vehicles, and even causes the enemy's UI to glitch out for a few seconds. The wingsuit allows you to glide at a much further distance and a much faster pace than the parachute, making it harder for enemies to hit you while you're in the air. Next we have Dozer. Currently Dozer's perk has been disabled, but hopefully this issue has been fixed by the time you're watching this video. He has a large war shield that he can use to push objectives. He also receives less damage from explosives. Next we have McKay. McKay is unlocked when you hit rank 15. He has a grapple hook, which allows him to get around a lot easier than most players. He can also move faster on zip lines by aiming down the sights while zipping. Next we have Irish. 
Yes, this is the same Irish from Battlefield 4. You may recognize his voice in the tutorials. Irish has a deployable cover shield. His shield is planted on the ground to provide extra cover. This is great for defending objectives and players, and you can also drop a mine that'll destroy objectives that pass through like grenades and missiles. Irish also has additional armor, so he can take a few extra hits compared to other specialists. Moving on to Boris. Boris can drop sentry turrets that shoot within a 180 degree radius to anything that goes into its line of sight. Boris also makes other sentry turrets more effective whenever he stands near them. Casper is basically your recon class. He has a ghillie suit and a drone he can fly to scan ahead and spot enemies. He also has a movement sensor that will turn red when an enemy is close by. If you see this turn red, hide in a bush and remain still, listen out for their footsteps. Casper is a great choice if you prefer a stealthier playstyle, however he is a harder specialist to master. Rao is a hacker. No, not that kind of hacker with an aimbot. He is a hacker that can disable electronics. His hack skill can disable a vehicle's firing for several seconds, which can completely turn the tide in a tank fight. That chopper bothering you? Just hack it, then shoot an AA missile. No more flares for him. Even hack a player. It'll scramble their UI, and if you kill them while hacked, it'll spot all the enemies within a small radius of the player. You'll even see them through walls for a split second. Hmm, maybe he is that kind of hacker. The hack ability takes several seconds and requires line of sight to be maintained, so ensure you're in a safe area while attempting to hack something. I find Rao one of the most fun specialists as his skill is quite unique and very rewarding. Pike has wall hacks. I'm not even kidding, she can see through walls. You don't unlock her until rank 25, but she is well worth unlocking. Firstly, anyone who shoots you will become spotted, making them very obvious to your team. Her ability scans the area and will reveal enemies behind cover. You'll be able to see them through walls. It has a battery charge level, so the longer you leave this ability active, the more battery it'll drain, so use it in moderation. However, I think she is one of the best specialists to use if you like knowing where your enemies are. Falk is your medic specialist. She has a pistol that can heal players from a range. She can also revive players to full health. If you hold down her ability, it'll heal yourself with the pistol. Great for if you want to stay mobile and get a quick heal. If you prefer to hang back and heal your team, she is great for that. However, she is also great for an offensive squad if you prefer to move in a more aggressive way and playstyle. You can make her gadget an ammo bag so she can heal, revive, and give out basic ammo. Last but not least, we have Angel. Angel is the ammo guy. If you find yourself always needing ammo, maybe give Angel a try. He can call in supply crates which replenish all ammo, including missiles and explosives. Players can also change their loadouts at these supply crates. Selecting the same loadout will also resupply all ammo. He is also the only other specialist besides Falk that can revive players. The revive player won't have full health, but they will have additional armor. If you want to be the ultimate support player as Angel, you can equip a health pack as your gadget, so you can heal, revive, and fully resupply ammo with your supply drops. Angel can also carry more explosive ammo than the other specialists. Now let's talk about weapons, unlocks, and appearances. As you rank up, you'll unlock more weapons and vehicles. As you get kills, you'll unlock attachments for that specific weapon or vehicle. You'll notice that you can't use your unlock straight away. You'll need to go to the collection menu. After clicking a game mode from the start menu, you'll see the collection menu at the top of the screen. Here you can change skins of specialists and weapons, edit your loadouts, change weapon attachments that you want access to in the game. If you click on weapons and select the weapon you want to edit, you'll see your unlocked attachments as well as the attachments you haven't unlocked yet. Each weapon has a mastery level. To increase your mastery level, uh, get kills in multiplayer with that weapon. Each rank requires more kills than the previous. You'll see four categories on the left. Each will allow you to select a few options to attach to your weapon. These will be the only attachments you'll have access to in-game, but you can change them during the game as much as you like. I personally like to have a red dot and a scope so I can be more effective at the various ranges. Having a silencer can be handy too. You can have armor-piercing bullets if you want to play more of an anti-vehicle role, and then switch back to normal bullets for infantry. I was a bit iffy about this system at first, but now that I've familiarized myself with it, it's actually pretty awesome. 
especially if you're going in for extended periods of time without dying and the conditions of the match keep changing. So now that we've pretty much covered all the basics of the game, you can get in there much more prepared and knowing what you're doing. Remember, there will always be newer players than you who don't know these things, so watching this video has already given you an advantage in battle. Information wins wars, or so they say. If you found this video useful, please give it a like to let me know, and whack that subscribe button if you're interested in more of my content. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll answer it as soon as I can. Thanks for watching guys.